This is not the Aegean Sea, but close enough. Come with us to explore some islands in the Gulf, and this, which is what helped to build a community by a culture of people who know how to cook some delicious food. Welcome to Tarpon Springs. Opa! Above the surface of the Anclote River, this region on Florida's Gulf Coast was already becoming known as a winter resort town in the late 1800s. Multiple freshwater bayous, the weather, and the railroads that made Tarpon Springs accessible from New York helped to put this town on the map. But it was what was under the waters that would give this region a Mediterranean makeover. It was 1905. The divers from the Dodecanese Islands off the coast of Greece began arriving in Tarpon Springs in a gold rush for sponges. To feed the sponge divers, restaurants were built up along the docks serving foods like flaming saganaki, dumaldes, pasticcio, moussaka, spanakopita, sovaki found in gyros, and tasty baked treats like kataifi. Today, the sponge diving industry still flourishes here and it's where you can experience and taste Greek culture. In this video, we'll show you the boat tours up the Anclote River that will take you out to Anclote Key, as well as giving you a tour of the sponge docks. We will also explore the often overlooked downtown Tarpon Springs, showing you breweries, restaurants, coffee shops, a retro arcade, and ride the Pinellas Trail. We'll take you inside of St. Nicholas Greek Orthodox Church and just down from the church, the Spring Bayou, where the Epiphany event takes place every January, where teenagers jump into the water to retrieve a cross. I got it! While Tarpon Springs is famous for its sponge docks, don't forget that it has some great nature to enjoy. With one of the best beaches in Florida, Fred Howard Park. We'll also take you to Anclote River Park, Sunset Beach, and ending at Crystal Beach before we explore Dunedin in next week's video. And a bonus, I'll share a tip of someone who you can see in Tarpon Springs who can keep you in good health with a nutritional saliva and blood analysis after eating all that Greek cheese and pasta. So join us as we explore the sponge docks downtown in the beaches of Tarpon Springs, Florida. We start our journey from the Tampa airport since many of you I know will be flying into Tampa. There are three different routes you can take to Tarpon Springs. All are about a 45 minute drive. We are taking the most scenic route, the one with the fewest lights, and that's on Florida State Road 60 over the Courtney Campbell Causeway. It connects Tampa with Clearwater. At 10 miles long, this is the longest causeway in Florida, just a gorgeous drive with palm trees on the side. Once over the bridge, we turn right on US 19. US-19 is more like a highway here, at least to Dunedin, then you start hitting some lights after that. But still moves pretty good. We passed Dunedin for now, that will be our next video. Arriving in downtown Tarpon Springs, passing the old city hall on the right, on alternate US-19. So that you can get a perspective of Tarpon Springs looking northwest, downtown is here. The spring bayou to the left. The sponge docks in Anclote River are here, in the mouth of the river to the gulf here. Looking out to the west, way off in the distance, Anclote Key. To the left of that, Fred Howard Park. And to the left of that, Sunset Beach. Then way out to the far left, Honeymoon Island, we will show in our Dunedin video next week. The Jolly Trolley is another way you can travel between Tarpon Springs, Dunedin, and Clearwater Beach. It's $5 for a day pass, children 8 and under free. Now on Safford Avenue, where the Pinellas Trail runs through. We'll show more of this in a bit. But first, it's time for breakfast at Tula's Trailside Cafe, just across the street from the old railroad station. 
Having breakfast with some friends of mine who moved to Tarpon Springs three years ago. They love it. Oh yeah. I love it here. It's beautiful. Downtown is a good place to eat. You'll find food is a little cheaper here than at the sponge docks, and parking is free. I'm having a bouillardie. It's a northern Greece dish. Scrambled eggs with feta, tomatoes, banana peppers, basil, garlic, and oregano. They have a good menu for breakfast, and wraps and sandwiches for lunch. Across the street from Tulio's Trailside Cafe is the old railroad station built in 1909. Now serves as a history museum. It is free, open Wednesdays to Saturdays from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. The Orange Belt Railway was really the first spark that made Tarpon Springs into a nice getaway. It was a narrow gauge railroad that ran between St. Petersburg and Sanford, just northeast of Orlando, making it more accessible from up north. While sponge diving was here before the Greeks arrived, it was the Greeks who perfected the process. Next to the train depot is Urban Grounds Coffee Lounge. As well as great coffee, they have baked items and light bites like avocado toast or quiche in a nice rustic setting. Across the street is Two Frogs Brewing Company. And next to that, the Replay Museum, a classic arcade with pinball games and retro video games like Pac-Man. It is $14 for a day pass or $8 for children 7 through 12. Also, around the corner from Tula's Cafe is the Orange Cycle Creamery, a good spot to cool off for dessert when riding the Pinellas Trail. And next to Tula's, the Neptune Cyclery, where you can rent a bike for riding the trail. The Pinellas Trail is 45 miles long, extending the whole length of Pinellas County from Tarpon Springs to St. Petersburg. It follows the old railroad corridor, just a great paved trail. We'll ride it again in next week's video through historic Dunedin. On the trail is Brighter Days Brewery, a very highly rated brew pub. Further down is Tarpon Tavern, a vintage pub with burgers and craft beer, seating right on the trail. And next to that, the Bistro, a rustic Italian bar and bistro. And lastly, on the left, the Spot Restaurant with good barbecue, chicken wings, quesadillas, and more. There is also a whole life wellness coach in Tarpon Springs that I've been seeing for about five years, Brandy with Stewart Analysis. She takes a quick blood and saliva sample and from it builds a holistic wellness plan with vitamins and herbs specific to your body's needs. So we can make sure we're doing like fulvic humic minerals? I learned so much from her. One of the things that keeps me healthy. Moving up Tarpon Avenue, just around the corner is a famous landmark of Tarpon Springs, St. Nicholas Greek Orthodox Church, with a Neo-Byzantine architecture. The early sponge divers and deckhands helped to build this church with contributions from their salaries. The January 6th Epiphany event begins here with liturgy services. Then a procession of clergy and people make their way to the Spring Bayou, two-tenths of a mile away. On the right, the 1910 Inn, a Queen Anne-style event venue. At the Spring Bayou, a white dove is released. Then the Archbishop casts the cross into the water, and around 50 teenagers, 16 to 18-year-olds, dive into the water like this. Opa! The event celebrates Christ's baptism. The diver who retrieves the cross is considered to be blessed for the entire year. The event can draw up to 20,000 people, so it's a pretty big deal. We head north on alternate US-19. The sponge docks are just a mile north of downtown. On the right, Morgan May's Oyster House. On the left, Tarpon Springs Distillery. And further down, Katarina's Tavern and Grill. Gonna go over the Anclote River to the opposite side of the river from the sponge docks, just to show you a popular tiki bar. Captain Jack's Waterfront Grill. They have a surf and turf menu in a laid back tropical setting. Next to Captain Jack's is Tarpon Landing Marina, where you can rent pontoons with sea breeze boat rentals. They are about $250 to $350 for a day, $100 mandatory insurance, although not pet friendly. <laughs> Now back over the Anclote River, on this side of the bridge is River Wild Kayaking that offers a two-hour guided eco-tour on the Anclote River and through the mangroves. It is $49 for adults, $44 for children 15 and under. At the corner of Alternate 19 and Adekanese Boulevard 
is a building that was once the famous Papa's Restaurant that started in 1925. Dada Boulevard, named after the islands off the coast of Greece, is the main street along the sponge docks. <laughs> Gonna eat at Yanni's before our boat tour, which is behind the restaurant. Parking is pretty reasonable. The bigger lots will charge five to seven dollars for all day parking. Tarpon Springs is filled with many Greek mom and pop family owned restaurants like Yanni's. Yanni's is my father's name. He was a sponge diver. He was a sponge diver recruited here in 1959. In 1978, he got the bends which is decompression sickness, sponge diving, could not work anymore. Mom opened Yanni's, named it after him, so she could feed the five of us. We've been here since then. Try Saganaki, which is a flaming Greek cheese with lemon sprinkled over the flames. I'm having a Greek sampler with domates, that stuffed grape leaves, pasticcio, a lasagna, moussaka, which is an eggplant, spanakopita, which is a crispy filo dough stuffed with spinach and feta cheese, and sovaki. With a salad, this Greek sampler was about $40, easily enough for two people. And Yanni's is dog friendly. There's about four boat tours at the Sponge Docks. We chose Spongerama Cruises because they are pet friendly. They are located behind Yanni's in the Sponge Factory building. Ran into Frankie Nelson and Maria, subscribers of ours visiting from Fairfax, Virginia. I love being by the water. You add restaurants and shops. It's a also next to Spongerama is Doc's Waterfront Restaurant with a patio right on the river. The Spongerama's two-hour cruise is $27 for adults, $15 for children under 10. Next to Spongerama is where you can rent pontoons, tritoons, or speedboats with your boat club. You go down to the Anclote, um, hit up the islands, go to the Keys, you can get to Dunedin, Clearwater, um, just spend the day out beach hopping and maybe hit up a restaurant or two. For a 24-foot tritune, it's $400 for full day, or around $250 to $300 for half day. No pets allowed. Further down on the docks is Dimitri's on the Water, a Greek dockside seafood restaurant. It is here you'll find another boat tour, St. Nicholas Boat Line. While they don't go to Anklo Island, they do have a sponge diver descend from the boat into the river and harvest a live sponge, and the tour is only $12 and they are also pet friendly. And just on the other side of the sponge docks, another boat tour, Odyssey Cruises. This tour is very similar to the one we are on. They also go out to Anclote Key. It is $28 for adults and $16 for children 2 through 10. This area is great for fishing, hence the name Tarpon Springs. It was in 1880 when Mary Orman Boyer, standing on the banks of the Spring Bayou said, look at that Tarpon Spring. Historians have said the fish she probably saw was mullet, not tarpon, but the name sounded good, so it stuck. There are multiple fishing charters you can take, like Golf Star Deep Sea Fishing, with half day, or 12 hour trips, or even a two day fishing trip. Tarpon Springs is 25 miles of waterway, which is one of the things that make this area so attractive. At the mouth of the Anclote River, which is three miles up the river from the sponge docks, is Anclote River Park. which has a nice beach right at the mouth, as well as fishing areas and a pavilion for picnics. Also a good modern boat ramp with ample trailer parking. Anclote Key is three miles off the coast of Tarpon Springs. The Anclote Lighthouse sits on the south part of Anclote Key. It was built in 1887. There are selected days throughout the year that they will allow you to climb the lighthouse for a $7 donation. The boat docks at the south part of the island, not far from the lighthouse. While the cruise is dog friendly, only service dogs are allowed on this part of Anclote Key. They do allow dogs on the North Anclote Bar. Now, if you don't want to get off, you don't have to. If you want to come back for the half hour is up, you're more than welcome to. You get 30 minutes to explore the beach. 
You can go swimming or collect shells or simply walk and enjoy the nature. Now, time to return to the sponge docks and resume our tour down Dada Canis Boulevard. On the left is Mykonos, specializing in grilled seafood. On the right, Dimitri's, that we showed from the boat earlier. We cross Athens Street, where there's more eateries we'll show in a bit. On the left, a taste of Greece bakery with Greek coffee, espresso, cappuccino, and frappe. The sponge docks on the right. Did you know that for 30 years in the early 1900s, sponge harvesting was Florida's biggest business, larger than citrus or tourism? The Anastasi here was molded after the last wooden haul sponge boat built in Tarpon Springs. It's still in use today. Across the street is the Sponge Exchange, a shopping village area. This is where the sponge divers would store their sponges in a large exchange building and then to be auctioned off in the courtyard. Today it's a shopping and dining area. There's the Anclote Brew with 20 ice cold taps, also known for the best grilled cheese in town or try nachos or desserts like warm butter cake with cream cheese filling. Sounds good. There's the candy barrel to load up on sugar. There's a candle boutique or Mama's Greek Cuisine, a traditional Greek restaurant featuring live music and belly dancing with elevated patio seating overlooking Athens Street. Athens Street is the second most popular street in Tarpon Springs with good eateries. There's Five Branches Brewery named for the five branches of the military, a veteran-owned nano brewery. There's Costa's Restaurant, a bistro with Euros and Slovakia, and weekend breakfast, Forno's Bakery. Ran into another subscriber visiting from Omaha, Nebraska. Magical place, never seen anything like this, so this is definitely cool for us. Enjoying my Euro that I picked up from Mama's Greek Cuisine. <laughs> Continuing down Dada Canis Boulevard, we arrive at one of Tarpon Springs' most popular restaurants, Hellas Restaurant and Bakery. There's a parking lot across the street. It's $5 for the day, and you pay at the gift shop next to it. Also, public restrooms here. Hellas has Greek classics and Hellenic murals and tiled floors. The bakery, which is where you can get authentic Greek pastries, like kataifi. They have a sampler pack you can get to try a variety of Greek pastries. Bella and I having Greek coffee. I think Bella has some Greek in her ancestry. She loves that kata ifi. Kata ifi is shredded filo dough with walnuts, honey, and cinnamon. I think it's cute of you and your dog. Oh yeah, oh thank you. Just let you know. They also have good ice cream at Hello's. Further down Dada Canis Boulevard, on the left, is the lighthouse shops. Inside the shops is where you can pick up unique things like hats. There's a jewelry store, a leather outlet. Across the street, wine at the docks, where you can do tastings for Greek, classic, and local wines. Now at the west end of Dada Canis is another of Tarpon Springs' most popular restaurant, Rusty Belly's Waterfront Grill, with local seafood and a tiki bar right on the water with live music. Dada Canis turns into Island Drive, and it's here where the Bayou Bistro is located at. Lesser known than Rusty Belly's, but I think every bit is good. Also dining right on the docks. It's right next to Golf Star Fishing Charters that we mentioned earlier. All right, let's head to the beach. A final look at the sponge docks from the west end of Dada Canis Boulevard. Traveling out to Fred Howard Beach. On the right, the Tarpon Bayou. On the left, the Mineta Branch, which feeds into the Whitcomb and Spring Bayou. In this Google Earth image, you see the sponge docks are here. There's four bayous of Tarpon Springs. The Spring Bayou is the smallest. We are heading out to Fred Howard Beach here, and then we'll hit Sunset Beach below that. Yes, Tarpon Springs is known for its sponge docks, but did you know, it also has one of the best beach parks in Florida. It has both a large park picnic areas with lots of trees and trails. 
in an impressive beach. Parking is $5. A mile long causeway leads to the beach in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico. Being out in the Gulf, it tends to get a lot of good wind. On the south side of the beach and causeway is the windsurfing area. You can rent kayaks, paddle boards, boogie boards, and bikes with Wheel Fun Rentals located at the end of the causeway on the north side. On the north side of the island, experience the pristine waters of the Gulf with a rocky shoreline, places to fish. You can see the Anclot Lighthouse way off in the distance. All Pinellas County parks are open seven days a week, 7 a.m. to sunset. It's only closed during Thanksgiving and Christmas. On the beach side, there are ADA crossovers. It's a good beach for swimming, although you do have to get a little ways into the water to get deep enough as the water depth is very shallow near the shoreline. But that can make it good for those with little kids. There are lifeguards and restroom facilities with outdoor showers. There's no concessions other than a food truck for slushies and ice cream. On the causeway bridges, there's a total of four cutout concrete fishing platforms. The park area has a mile long trail, but if you include it with the causeway, it ends up being two miles long. There's nine picnic shelters, two playgrounds, plenty of wildlife with eagles, gopher tortoises, and fox squirrels. Just a couple of miles south of Fred Howard Park is another beach connected to the mainland by a causeway, Sunset Beach. It is much smaller than Howard Beach, but also less crowded. As the name implies, good for sunset. However, we are going further south to another park for sunset. A mile south of downtown is the historic Tarpon Springs Golf Club. This course originally began in 1907 as a nine hole course and was along the old railroad, was converted to an 18 hole in 1927. Three miles south of downtown is another great lesser known park, Wall Springs Park. It's right on the Pinellas Trail. It's actually in Palm Harbor city limits. This is a peaceful park that has a natural spring, which was used as a bathing area until the 1960s. There's a boardwalk nature trail, saltwater fishing, a pier, and a three-story observation tower that is being renovated right now. In our final stop, two miles south of Wall Spring Park, is Crystal Beach Pier and Live Oak Park. This is a pet-friendly, older seaside park that provides a picturesque nature scene for a golf sunset. Most tourists do not know about this place, so don't tell nobody. Usually not very crowded. During the day, good for viewing dolphins and other wildlife. And in the evenings, excellent for sunset. A look at the golf and way out in the distance, Honeymoon Island, that we will show in our next video as we go to Dunedin. The Greeks are everything you admire in a culture of people, hardworking, passionate, bonded by a strong faith, creators of great food, and who take pride in their hospitality. Just like all the ingredients that make up a good masaka or pasticcio, Tarpon Springs has all that is needed for a recipe of a nice getaway. The hospitality of the Greek people, the history, the variety of things to do, from exploring the beaches to fishing to a ride on the Pinellas Trail or dinner at the Sponge Docks. And it's only seven miles north of another great getaway we will show next week. Yes, two tickets from Tarpon Springs to Dunedin aboard the Orange Belt Railroad with a dog. Aboard! A town with a Scottish heritage, with more islands in the Gulf, and a vibrant quaint downtown district, and Blue Jays. If traveling with a dog, I recommend these Kurgo Dog Backpacks. It allows you to bring your dog without putting them through excessive walking and heat. I put a link in the description below. We are Tampa Aerial Media. We film travel promos across the USA. 
for stock footage, or if you would like to hire us to film your region, city, or resort, contact us at info at tampaaerialmedia.com. For those wondering about our Highway A1A series, the next two videos in that series, Fort Lauderdale and Palm Beach, have already been filmed. Just have to edit those. But we only got about six weeks left of good weather for filming in Florida. So I wanted to do some of these West Coast videos first. From Tarpon Springs, as the Greek poet once said, As you set out for Ithaca, hope your road is a long one, full of adventure and full of discovery. Opa. See you next week in Dunedin.